The second one, I put that down, the F, friends. So the second one is, it's going to be tough to make good decisions and be with people who are making bad decisions. I've got a friend who um, at 40 years old, he's probably got 4% body fat. He played uh, high school football. He played college football, was supposed to go to the pros. He should have been in the NFL, but when he got to college, he started hanging with guys who like to smoke, drink, and fight. And they got in fights every single year. Freshman, he got into a fight. Sophomore, he got in a fight. Junior year, he got into a fight. And the fight was so bad that they stopped the dude and they killed him. And he was on the front page of the newspaper and on ESPN. And when he would go to the NFL, for practice, the NFL player, the NFL teams would say, oh, you got what on your record? Oh, no, we can't. Uh-uh, -uh, we can't. So I don't care how many good decisions you make. If you're hanging with people who are not making good decisions, a negative plus a positive equal a negative. So I want to make sure you understand that. And you go to math class. <laughs> Next time you go to math, pay attention. A positive plus a negative. A positive times a negative. That's it's a negative. So the second thing you need to do is you need to select the people in your circle of influence who are going to help you make your dreams become a reality. Let me just be honest with you. I ain't trying to dog nobody out. But if he, if your friends are putting you in a position where you drinking and you smoking and you high, they're not your real friends. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not su suggesting that you stop hanging with them. My boy Anthony Flynn, my guy, my business partner. Anthony Flynn said if you want to make it to the New York Times, you got to hire Rory. So I had a friend who connected me with a friend to help me make my dreams become a reality. If you have people in your circle, I don't care what they call themselves, friend. They're not a friend, they are a foe. If the person is not helping you to elevate, but what they're doing is destroying you, you can label it friend, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but they're destroying you and you are a fool to let somebody destroy you and your dreams. And let me tell you why. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. But at some point, I, I don't care what we all believe in this room. This is what we all have in common. We all believe we're going to die. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> Everybody in this room, amen. I don't care how, I, I don't care if you're working out every day, you're not gonna make it to 250 working out. It's not about to happen. I don't care what kind of drink you look on, you got your little green juice you drink, you can drink it till you're blue in the face. You're not gonna make it to 200. I'm just being honest. You're not gonna make it to 200. And if you make it to 100, you probably won't have your youth. So because you don't live long, you don't have time not to make your dreams and goals become reality. Every single day, because you don't know how long you have, every single day should be about what can I do? What can I have? What can I be? And you got to hang out with other people on the same trajectory you're on. I'm just being real, y'all. I'm, I'm from Detroit, right? Detroit ain't won. We ain't won. A, we won one playoff game since 1957. 1957. I just want to show y'all something. The second one is friends. Say friends or foe. Come on, friends or foe. There's no. There's nothing in the middle. <laughs> like there's no middle thing. <laughs> they either a friend and they're elevating you, or they're a foe. They tearing you down. There's no middle ground. So, 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 I'm a Lion fan, right? And so, you know, years ago, everybody would just, oh, Stafford is the worst quarterback. Stafford getting hit. Stafford bringing us down fourth quarter, two seconds left. He tried to throw a touchdown. hit, throw the touchdown. They're like, Stafford is whack. We can't stand Stafford. Just get rid of him. And if we get rid of him, we're going to win some games. Stafford left the Lions. He went to the Rams, an organization that want to win, an organization that pay people to win, an organization that has won before they, they brought in the best of the best and in one year he left the Lions and he won the Super Bowl 
One year. One year he lost a, he left a losing franchise. Went to a winning franchise and won a Super Bowl. Now he got all kind of AT&T commercial. He got Pizza Pizza. He got Ford one F-150 train. He never had that when he was with the Lions. Why? Because when you're hanging with losers, you lose. But when you're hanging with winners, you win. And there is no middle ground. There's no middle ground. Now, we got to be honest. You may like hanging with people who bring you down. That's okay. Keep hanging with them. I'm not suggesting you stop. But don't lie to yourself and say that a foe is a friend. Call it what it is. My man don't mean me no good. We doing dumb stuff. Stuff that could put us in jail. Stuff that could... <laughs> so let me just put it like this to you. Go do your homework when you get a chance. Alcohol is going is, is to tear your brain. It's going to destroy your brain. Marijuana, you call it whatever you want to call it. A study show. It will tear, it will make you lose brain cells. Now some of you in this room, you ain't got enough to be losing. Okay, you want to be, you want to be smart about this, okay? You ain't got a whole bunch of them to be losing. I'm just being real. I was one of them. Right? High school dropout. GED. I'm not playing. I'm not here to play. I'm here to save somebody life. I'm not here to be liked. There are those of you who you not you not already your your IQ ain't that high already. Don't do stuff to destroy it. Just being honest. Put yourself in a winning situation. Does that make sense? Put yourself in a winning situation. Right? Now some of you, maybe you got enough brain cells to lose something. You're just that sweet. But a lot of us in this room, we don't have that. So what we want to do is, we don't want to do stuff that's going to destroy us and bring us down. We want to do the stuff that elevates us. Does that make sense? Now, we're not better than other people who do it, but I, this is what I tell people all the time. I went from a high school dropout, GED to a PhD. I'm not better than nobody. I am more prepared than some people. I made different decisions than some people. My, it doesn't mean my character is better. It don't mean I'm going to be in heaven. Good night. Nah, that's not what it means. But it means I made some decisions that make life easier for me. Let me tell you something. I'm a high school dropout. I hate school. Getting a PhD has opened up doors for me that weren't open when I was a high school dropout. It was just a decision that I made. Does that make sense? When you say you got a PhD, it's just certain things you don't have to say. I don't have to negotiate no more. When I was like high school dropout, I had to negotiate. When I had a four year degree, I had to negotiate. When you get a PhD, you have to negotiate. When you're a New York Times bestseller, you don't negotiate. You say, this is what my price is. They either take it or they leave it. I'm not negotiating. The university didn't negotiate how much I had to pay for my PhD. There was no negotiating. <laughs> We didn't negotiate it. It's like, this is how much it cost. The dissertation, there was no negotiating with the dissertation. There was no negotiating. So I didn't, I didn't get to negotiate. So now I've earned the right to charge you what I'm charging. You either pay it or you don't. You don't add stuff. When you make good decisions, you make other people make good decisions when they deal with you. When you make bad decisions, people can make bad decisions on you. Does that make sense? I, okay. So, 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 this let me be honest. This is what I mean. You go to jail, you made some bad decisions. If they decide they don't want to feed you, they don't have to feed you and can't let nobody do about it. <laughs> if they decide they want to put you in a isolation, they can put you in isolation and your mama can't do nothing about it. You made a decision that was a bad decision and now other people get to treat you badly because you treat yourself badly. I'm just being real with you. That's what happens. I need you to be clear. When you don't take care of yourself, you teach other people how or not to take care of you. So when you take care of yourself and you make good decisions, you surround yourself with people now who see you are a good decision maker and they treat you differently. And let me tell you what happens 90% of the time when I walk away and they say, no, this is how it's going to be and I walk away, I usually get a call 24 hours later. Mr. Tom, it's about the picture taking. It's just, we thought it through and it's not necessary. You just speak. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? All right. So number two, we're going to, we're going to choose our friends wisely. We're going to do what? 
Now listen to me. I'm going to say a name. Raise your hand if you ever heard of it before. Usain Bolt. You ever heard of that name before? Good. What team does he run for? Jamaica. Let me say this to you guys, and I mean this with all my heart. I grew up, I'm a 70s kid. I grew up in the 80s watching Flo Jo, Carl Lewis, Michael Johnson. Can I be honest with y'all? You couldn't beat the U.S. Olympic team. You couldn't beat us. This guy named Usain Bolt came out of nowhere. He started beating our best players. He beat our best runners, y'all. He was winning the gold. He was so sweet. He would beat them and be looking at them while he was running. <laughs> he like, nah. They couldn't do nothing. But guess what? There were some other people in Jamaica. Be careful who you hang with. There were some other people in Jamaica, some men who started training with Usain Bolt. And then all of a sudden, Usain Bolt beat us. Then all of a sudden, the 4x4 four four relay, now nah, they beating us. And then I guess the women found out what they were doing and the women start practicing with him. <laughs> and in the last Olympic, Olympics, the women's team won gold, silver, and bronze. Our best runner. They blew out the water. Why? Because they all start training with him. Be careful who you train with. You train with a gold medalist, you become a gold medalist. You train with silver, you become silver. You train with bronze, you become bronze. You train, you start training with people who do not qualify, you no longer qualify. I made a decision to get the New York Times and I got with a friend who connected me with somebody who had already got three books that were New York Times bestseller and helped five, six other people get it. And so when I joined, it was easy for me to do it because I started hanging with people who did it. If you're a high school, if you're struggling in school, you probably will start running with A students. Go and get your little lunch money and start paying for them to eat. <laughs> start putting your little money to the side. Be like, look, let's study food on me. All the pizza, pizza y'all want, I got it. Drinks, everything on me. Dessert on me. And you start studying with gold medal studiers. And watch you become one. I went from a high school dropout, homeless. I failed English twice in college. And I'm not talking about the 300 level, the one zero one. <laughs> I failed a one zero one twice. They felt so bad for me, I didn't even have to take it third time. I just clipped it and got it. They were like, don't even worry about taking it again. They're going to take a test and see if you can pass. But I just wrote a New York, why? Because I start hanging with. Good, A, you can see the A, write the A down. The A is be your authentic self. You, you owe you, you owe you to make great decisions. You owe you to choose your friends wisely. You owe you to pick people who go on somewhere with their life. You owe you. You owe you. I picked Dee Dee when I was 16 years old in church. I started dating Dee Dee because she was doing something with her life. And she got on my last nerves when she forced me to go get my GED. I will never forget. Dee Dee called me to her house. She said, my mom, uh, my mom is gone. Can you come over? I was like, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. You know what I'm saying? What? Got on my bike. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Three mile ride. I was just riding over. Her mom is gone. Her mom is gone. She invited me over. Wow, finally. Her mom is gone. Her mom is gone. <laughs> finally, after all these months, it's on and popping. I get to the house and she comes outside. I'm like, oh, what you coming out for? I thought you said your mom was gone. She says she is, but we need to talk first. I was like, talk about what? <laughs> She's like, I got to ask you a question first. And I was like, all right, what you got to ask me? Hurry up. <laughs> she said, do you love me? I said, love you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love you. She was like, no, no, do you love me, love me? I said, yeah, I love you, love you. <laughs> She said, all right, I want to show you something. I was like, yes. 
So she pulled a piece of paper out of her back pocket. I said, what? <laughs> it was an acceptance letter to college. She said, I got accepted into college. And if you don't go get your GED and follow me to college, I'm breaking up with you. Let me just tell y'all something. I hate school. <laughs> Never liked school, dropped out of school. But when she said that, I might, I might be a little slow, but I ain't stupid. <laughs> I went to night school, studied and passed my GD and followed the college. We've been married almost 33 years. <laughs>